word to wise Grass only greener when it's fertilized Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies That's any beautiful, a drift than her purple lies You can't see me, you Stevie Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie And make it look easy Before we get started, if you want to see more awesome comic book videos like this one It only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers Click, click before we jump into today's video, I wanted to talk to you real quick about a website called Juasso Graphics. It's a really awesome website. You can find all sorts of clothes and other items themed after some of your favorite animes like Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, My Hero Academia, but with a little bit of blurred seasoning on it. Not only that, you can get 10% off your entire purchase if you use the promo code Blurred Without Fear. So go check out the website, get some awesome apparel, and let them know the Blurred Without Fear sent you. What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a controversial figure. And I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. One of my personal favorite characters in comic books. And I know that is a controversial statement to make on the internet. But you know what? That is why I am the blurred without fear. Well, because I'm not scared to speak my mind. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about Captain Marvel. And I know that is very divisive. I know it probably won't get me the most views, but you know what? I don't really care. I'm gonna go ahead and say caveats for this video. If you do not like Captain Marvel, then I'm probably not gonna tell you anything in this video that's gonna change your mind and I would probably suggest that you turn around and go watch something else. On the other hand, I'm also gonna say that there's nothing you can say that will change my mind about how I feel about Captain Marvel, so you could tell me how much of an NPC blue pill beta male cuck that I am, I'm just not gonna care. Trust me, I get called worse all the time, and babies don't sleep as good as I do. But anyways, we are gonna be talking about Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson and Carmen Carnero. Issues number one through three. Okay, so really to kind of get you in the mindset and get your mind right for everything that's gonna be going on this issue, I feel like there's some things we need to address. First of all, one of them is that Carol has been out in the far reaches of space fighting the good fight for some time, whether it is alongside Alpha Flight or Solo Dolo. Now, of course, around the time frame that these issues came out, she had just recently rejoined with the Avengers and more importantly, recently had her origin retconned. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about the origin in this video. I kind of briefly went over it in the Who Is Captain Marvel video that I did a while back. I will try to remember to link that bad boy in the description somewhere or put it in the cards for you, but just know I will probably delve into that a little more at a later date. But the main thing is that now that she's back, Tony Stark has been dogging her left and right, trying to get her to tell the public what she's been up to, because since she's been you know, out in space doing all sorts of this and that random stuff and things, no one really knows what to think of Captain Marvel because, well, they haven't been able to see it. And a lot of this is actually kind of a commentary. Kelly Thompson does a really good job uh, in the handling of Captain Marvel because she openly addresses the criticisms and the negativity uh, as far as opinions go from the vocal minority about Captain Marvel. And she kind of uses it in ways to turn it into a story. And that's what I really like about the series and what inspired me to talk about it. Actually, I've always really liked Captain Marvel, but I've been really enjoying it lately. Now, for those unfamiliar with the character of Carol Danvers, you really only need to know one thing to understand why she's not crazy about what Tony wants her to do. And more importantly, why it's a big deal she's going to do it at all. You see, Carol Danvers is a ridiculously private person. Like, she doesn't let anyone into her personal life. One of the few people who can even boast being legit friends with Carol is Jessica Drew, the Spider Woman. Monica Rambeau, Jessica Jones, and She-Hulk are probably some of the rare exceptions to this rule, and they're still not half as close with her as Spider Woman is. And after losing Rhodey, who she was dating at the time, she's also not crazy about letting people get close to her again. But for once, she decides maybe Tony's idea 
despite being a bad idea that will ultimately come back to bite her in the ass eventually, might not be the worst thing ever after all. Speaking of relationships, Rhodey has since been brought back from the Shadow Realm because comic books. Well, Stark technology too, but mostly comic books. And it doesn't take long for Carol's latest charge, Jennifer Takeda, better known as Hazmat, a former Avengers Academy hopeful trying to get help with her powers, it doesn't take long for her to realize Carol wants Rhodey back. And Rhodey wants Carol back too. They're just being really awkward about it. Cute, but hella awkward. Long story short, Carol and Rhodey aren't getting coffee just yet. Carol is still on the fence about getting back with Rhodey because she feels like when he died, they had their chance and that maybe it was the universe's way of saying, hey, this isn't going to work out. And though she desperately wants it, she's terrified of getting back into it because she's afraid of losing Rhodey yet again. So yeah, they're not getting coffee, but burgers and fries is not a bad start to rekindling a romance that was cut short by the mad Titan Thanos blowing Rhodey's back out the hard way. But before they can rekindle that spark, Tony Stark's Avengers appointed interview to get Carol some good press pulls up. And this plucky young reporter by the name of Ripley Ryan is basically here to clean up Carol's image to the public, a clear reference and commentary once again on how a vocal and small, and believe me, it is a very small, mind you, contingent of supposed comics fans who quotey fingers hate Carol Danvers being Captain Marvel. But before Carol can give her the juicy details about her time in space, the nuclear man shows up to spread his highly sexist and misogynistic points of view to Marvel's first feminist icon. For those unfamiliar, the Nuclear Man is a Fantastic Four villain who made his first appearance in Fantastic Four number 151 in 1974 and is basically a warrior king from an alternate and future Earth where women are slaves to men. Wow. Doesn't sound too different from here, am I right? <laughs> Nothing has changed for him since his debut. He refuses to even call Captain Marvel Captain Marvel. He simply refers to her as Marvel Lady. How could a woman ever captain anything other than a kitchen? You know, his words, not mine. At least that's how he seems to view it. But Carol, ever the fighter, is more than ready to put hands on him in all the ways that he won't like. Not just hands, but feet as well. And she immediately puts him on his ass. Hell, by the time the Avengers show up, the dust is settled and the smoke is cleared and Carol is walking out the game, carry two belts. But before the Avengers can take Nuclear Man into custody, he opens a portal and snatches up the young, plucky reporter, Ripley Ryan, and deuces out. But Carol, not knowing where the portal leads or how dangerous the other side of it could be, she leaps in head first because that's what heroes do. And before Iron Man, Thor, or Captain America can even follow her lead, the portal explodes with energy, knocking them back, and now it's gone. But Rhodey isn't worried. He knows Carol better than most, and he's right. She's already beating the brakes off Nuclear Man the second she gets through that portal, one that apparently did not lead to an alternate Earth unless you count Roosevelt Island as such. But Carol learns that she isn't the only one trapped over there. When Nuclear Man finally gets the better of her, he starts smelling himself. A guy who was not five seconds ago eating pavement now thinks he's Billy Badass. Until Spider Woman, Echo, and Hazmat in full Mad Max Fury Road cosplay pull up with the wild Marvel vs. Capcom assist. This sends Nuclear Man off to lick his wounds and gives Carol time to learn what the hell is going on. All of them are trapped in a time distortion. Inside the barrier, it's been roughly 50 days for those who lived on Roosevelt Island, namely Echo. Now for Hazmat and Spider Woman who came in after the barrier was put up, it's been about roughly 25 days. For everyone else outside the barrier, it's only been a mere 12 hours. And it's a damn shame that Roosevelt Island residents, X-23 and Honey Badger, are out of town right now because they could really use their help right now. More importantly, other than Nuclear Man, only women can enter the barrier. 
As for the men, they've all gone missing. Apparently, the men have been rounded up, likely taken to Nuclear Man's Floaty Fingers Citadel, and Spider Woman hasn't been able to get 100% intel on this for herself because they spend most of their days just trying to survive and defend their position and not be enslaved themselves. Fortunately for them, there is one man among the survivors who can tell them exactly what's what with Nuclear Man, and his name is Som, the only man to ever escape the Citadel. He's able to shed some light, and he seems to believe the men are being held as Quotey Fingers resources. Nuclear Man isn't fond of anything or anyone who challenge his alpha male position, but he's not stupid. He wants servants as well. Another problem they're having is that their powers, save for Carol's, aren't working properly, if at all. Apparently, he still has his old will-weakening ray that may or may not be affecting them in some way. And they'll have time to test this out because Nuclear Man's metal men are running up to get done up. And when they attack, they seem particularly focused on two things, Psalm and Carol Danvers, which is very interesting. They even say something very telling, that Psalm is squishy and weak, but the king will want him alive. Hmm. A game is the foot. Carol is doing everything she can to stop the Metal Men army, and she's even able to keep Hazmat from getting jacked, but she herself gets caught off guard and the Metal Men try to take her away. But wouldn't it be the best time to have a Hulk right now? Yeah, Carol thinks so as well. Sadly, Nuclear Man disagrees. As She-Hulk comes crashing down like a meteoric Hulk smash, something strange happens. She transforms back into Jennifer Walters mid-fall and is fatally falling towards the pavement. But what a fine time to prove beyond all doubt that Carol is at full power. Or something close to it. She unleashes a binary blast wave that annihilates every metal man surrounding her and makes it just in time to catch a helpless Jennifer Walters before she becomes street pizza. Fortunately, Jennifer is okay, if not a little loopy. And just like that, most of Carol's closest confidants and friends are there by her side, for better or worse. Regardless of losing their powers, Carol's got hers, and that might just be all they need. One thing they don't need is a liability, and that would be Psalm. Carol sees him for the threat he could pose to them. He is clearly connected to Nuclear Man in some way, and Carol comes out and says it. None of it adds up. Why was he to be taken alive and her to be taken as a bride? Something that clearly brings nothing but bad memories for her. People always focus on her past with Rogue, but many tend to forget the greatest tragedy of Carol's life was being brainwashed and forced to marry and be impregnated by her future son from an alternate reality. Yeah, that happened, and best believe, no one in Marvel who wrote for Avengers issue number 200, where that story is contained, will fess up to having written it. And for good reason, it's problematic as well. Truth is, Som is the son of Nuclear Man. Som recognizes that his father is a piece of shit, plain and simple, and he wanted to get far away from him. He doesn't want to become his father. He's better than that. He doesn't want to enslave women or treat them as lessers. In internet hate speak, he'd probably be classified as a NPC blue pill beta male SJW cuck, which makes him cool with me because us NPC blue pill beta male SJW cucks gotta stick together. We also learned that the reason Nuclear Man came to New York in the first place was to take Carol as a bride and use her as a baby factory to spawn super babies with Nuclear Man. Be surprised. But for as, um, terse as Carol comes off, she's actually going to be really straight up with Psalm. He's too knowledgeable about their setup to let go free. And if he gets captured, he could ruin them, intentional or otherwise. If they hold him prisoner, it would be a waste because he's actually quite a decent combatant and they're too underpowered to risk that. All the women vouch for Psalm and they say he's good people. And Psalm, well, he seems to be more than pleased to continue helping just like he has been. 
But Carol, for as cool as she's being about this, she's clear on one thing. And to paraphrase uh, a line, one of my favorite lines from Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels by Rory Breaker is, If the milk turns out to be sour, I ain't the kind of to drink it. Nuclear Man will be the least of Psalm's concerns if he betrays her. Now, please understand, Carol is letting him off the hook, but not off the leash. She has Echo tailing him, so if he pulls any f it's on and popping. Carol spends the rest of her time in this never pass bedtime land version of Mad Max Fury Road, training the women to get them ready for the fight to come, and is preparing them to launch a mission to find the missing men so families and friends can be reunited. And it seems Som has found a way to help them do it, but it's too risky to send in a large force. So a small recon team will have to do it. And Carol has just the two people for it, herself and Som. And they're also gonna bring Spider-Woman along as well, but yeah, at the time, they were only gonna bring two people. And this is because she still doesn't 100% trust Som yet. But Echo, who apparently was hiding in the rafters this whole time while they were plotting out their plan, has been telling him just as Carol asked her to, and she seems to believe that he's clean. He may be Nuclear Man's son, but Som seems to really be against what his father is up to. So it's worth a shot to trust him. And as they travel through the underground tunnels to sneak into Nuclear Man's Citadel, something triggers an alarm. Carol wants Spider-Woman and Som to run Run for it while she holds them off. But Som has to come clean about something he was too afraid to tell Carol about before. Nuclear Man lured Carol to Roosevelt Island. This was all a setup, a setup that Som had planned. Nuclear Man wanted to break Carol and make her bear him an uber baby. Now this we all knew, this isn't really news, we've brought this up just you know, a few minutes ago. But the part of the story that Psalm didn't tell Carol was that it was his plan. Now, he didn't do this to set Carol up for her to fail. He knew Carol would be the one that could inspire and lead everyone in an effort to save them all from Nuclear Man and his handmaid's tail on steroids. Carol isn't happy about learning this, but she knows Psalm meant well. Not only that, but Carol must meet Nuclear Man's latest weapon against her. Someone who is very intimate with Carol Danvers. Someone Carol has had major beef with in the past. And I'm not talking the kind you cook. Someone who can match her in raw power now. Someone tailor-made to break Carol and get her ready for the superpower hour edition of Baby Making Time. The new weapon that Nuclear Man is about to unleash is the last person Captain Marvel would ever want to see. Rogue. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, Rogue is not in her right mind. She's actually being mind controlled and brainwashed by Nuclear Man. And she has gotten a significant power upgrade that we'll get into in the next video. But yeah, this I like this setup. I like what Kelly Thompson and Carmen Carnero are doing here with the writing and the art. The combination works great. It's fantastic. It's a great book, reads well, is great on commentary, and I think it actually addresses a lot of elephants in the room in regards to people who are either A, fans of Captain Marvel, or B, not fans of Captain Marvel, and you just take that however you like. Me personally, I'm here for it because I actually like when the writers are aware that characters or teams have detractors and they address those detractors. Now, whether it be in a sincere way or a tongue-in-cheek way, I don't really care. I just like when it happens. Because I'm a wrestling fan, and I always say that some of the best storylines, which you would call a work, come from shoots, which a shoot is something that's real. So sometimes when you take something that's real and turn it into fantasy, a lot of times you're gonna have, a lot of times that's a license to print money, and I feel like that's the case right here. I actually kind of hope that when they do the next Captain Marvel movies, you or anything with the MCU regarding Captain Marvel, they actually use more of this. I want to see more of this, please, and thank you. But anyways, let me know what you think about Captain Marvel so far. And remember, you're not going to change my mind. Sound off in the comments.
So hey, you made it to the end of the video. Awesome for you. If you enjoyed this video, and if you made it this far, I don't see how you didn't, do me a favor, Hulk smash that like button. And if you wanna see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. And tap that bell so you know when I post up. Also, feel free to go check out my Patreon, where if you chuck in a buck, you can get early access to most of my videos, up to a week early. And if you have time, make sure you swing by nerd901.com, where you can find more of my content as well as other amazing stuff. Anyways, until next time, I love you 3000 plus ultra.